Hello everyone, welcome to Vicar John Ministries. I'm Pastor John Berg, Vicar John, and this is our weekly worship service. And I praise the Lord that we can all gather like this uh, once a week and, and, uh, and, and hear something from the Lord. And, and uh, that's what we're here for. If you don't have a church home or, or you can't make it to a regular service someplace, be sure to tune us in. Uh, I just thank you for all the people that <clears throat> that are already doing it and and there's no limit when we're on the internet so praise the lord for that before we begin we have some announcements to make we you can find us on facebook and youtube under vicar john you can find us on our website under vicarjohn.com uh, you can pause at any point in the service and uh, play some music and i suggest that i strongly suggest that and and here are some suggestions for this week uh, one of my favorites is called the summons uh, all, Jesus is all the world to me, and precious name uh, are just some suggestions for this week, but you can, you can go out on your own, and, and I always encourage that. Uh, uh, play your favorite uh, hymns or praise songs. The title of today's sermon is, uh, To the Left, Are You to the Left or to the Right? Hmm, how about that? Okay, um, Let's see, That's, uh, that should bring us up to date. Let us uh, uh, start with the ringing in the hour of worship, and I'll get that going here for you. And, and uh... Let us open with a word of prayer. Oh, gracious Lord, we thank you and praise you for this beautiful day. And we just uh, ask that you put the Holy Spirit upon us as we come to worship you and only you in the next uh, few minutes. And, and if there's any bad spirits around us, Lord, we ask, them in your, we ask in your name to cast them out. Cast them away from us. And we just praise you. We can always come to you in prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. <clears throat> Amen. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, our proverb this week comes from uh, Proverbs 23, 9. It says, do not speak to the fool, for he will scorn the wisdom of your words. Very wise words, very wise words. Uh, our call to worship today comes from parts of Psalm 104. Praise the Lord, O my soul. O Lord, my God, you are very great. You are clothed with splendor and majesty. How many, how many are your works, O Lord? In wisdom you made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Praise the Lord, O my soul. Praise the Lord. I love that. Uh, now we come to our time of prayer, and and uh, and we'll go into that in just a moment. But I want you also to think of God moments that you have in your life. Uh, just any any moment is a God moment, and just uh, uh, dedicate your life to, to God and and uh, notice all the moments you have. And uh, um, we had a. A sprinkling of snow last night so that that was a god moment even though uh, uh probably not wanted in many places in areas but it's the season so anyway um so now let's uh let's go into a time of prayer and i'll pr ask you to stop here in just a moment pray with me uh, oh gracious and all-knowing god we praise you and thank you for being a major part of our lives. We ask that you continue to watch over us as we live our lives in this broken world. We pray this in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And now we come to you in a moment of silent prayer. Please push the pause button. Oh, gracious Lord, we, we thank you so much for... Uh, just for everything you give us, Lord, and and uh, sometimes it's it's it we think it gets in our way, and 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 it isn't, Lord. And I'm thinking of of the snow we had here last night. Uh, it wasn't very much, uh, you know, less than an inch, and and uh, and I know it'll go away, but it's it's a sign of things coming, Lord. And and uh, you are very good at giving us signs of what's ahead of our of our lives, and it's not just the seasons, uh, physical seasons we have like uh, fall and winter. And it's the seasons of our lives, Lord. And, and uh, help us to recognize where we're at, uh, Lord. And help us uh, to help others uh, to recognize where they're at and, and, and the stages of life we have. And, and, uh, and, and that as long as we are still breathing, uh, we are in one stage of life for you. 
and only for you, Lord. And just help us to remember that because we forget. We forget at times, Lord. Uh, and and uh, help us to remember that uh, we should dedicate our lives to you and just be faithful to you all the time. We just praise you, Lord. And we just ask that you uh, hold up these, we hold up these people and we ask that you bless them in ways that are pleasing to you. We're thinking of uh, uh, our hurting and poor throughout the world, our, our leaders in this country and abroad and our, our troops, wherever they may be, Lord. Uh, we just ask for blessings upon these people. Um, we ask for the uh, blessings upon our areas, Lord, where we are and, and as seasons change and, and uh, just keep us safe and bring us back again, Lord. We also ask there are many people on our minds, Lord. We ask that you uh, would just bless them with healing or whatever, Lord. Just uh, uh, just bring them into your fold, Lord. We just, we just thank you, Lord, for this love you give us that's all the time and everywhere. And we just praise you as we pray the Lord, the, the prayer that the Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Are you to the right or are you to the left? And we look at Mark today. Mark 10 verses 35 through 45. Then James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came to him. Teacher, they said, we want you to do for us whatever we ask. What do you want me to do for you? He asked. They replied, let one of us sit at your right and the other at your left in your glory. You don't know what you are asking, Jesus said. Can you drink the cup I drink or be baptized with the baptism I am baptized with? We can, they answered. Jesus said to them, You will drink the cup uh, I drink and be baptized with the baptism I am baptized with, but to sit on my right or left is not for me to grant. Those places belong to those for whom they have been prepared. Then when the ten heard about this, they became indignant with James and John. Jesus called them together and said, you know that those who are regarded as rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and their, high and their high officials exercise authority over them. Not so with you. Instead, whoever wants to become great among you must be, must be your servant, and whoever wants to be first must be slave of all. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many." The words of God for the people of God and all God's people said, praise be to God. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, we thank you again and we ask that the words of my mouth are your words and they fall upon open ears and, and minds and especially open hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This is one of those weeks that, uh, where I have had a, I've had a real hard time to get the sermon started. I, I uh, sometimes wish... Uh, I had a can of ether like we used to use on the, uh, in the old days back on the farm. One shot of that, that ether and that tractor would just start right up uh, and it, it just always worked. Well, I guess uh, that wouldn't be a practical thing for me to do or, or anyone else for that matter. So th this is what I did to get started. I just sat down and I wrote. Uh, some of this is what I wrote, and, and uh, some of it has been revised many times. And some of it's just been thrown out. This always seems to work for me. The reason for this is that I really have nothing to say on my own. But Jesus has a lot to say through me and my fingers and my mouth. So when I have to start like this, and, and this does happen every once in a while, uh, then the Holy Spirit will take over. Uh, the last thing I'm looking for whenever I am preaching or giving pastoral care to someone is accolades for me. I feel that, hey, you know, I'm getting too old for this type of thing and I'm really not into being upwardly mobile. Uh, these are traits that we really shouldn't have as followers of Jesus Christ. In today's reading, we find a couple of disciples who want to get a little farther ahead of the others. Let's see if this is the kind of thinking that we should be doing. Jack Russell tells a story 
of a dangerous sea coast that he'd read about in a devotional. This is, happens to be one of my favorite stories. Uh, there had been many shipwrecks uh, in this area, so a small life-saving station was built. It had only one boat, small boat, but the people faithfully manned it, and they saved many lives. The place uh, became well known for saving lives, and soon many people, more people, began to give their time and money. Uh, then they erected a new building. Later on, there was a large shipwreck, and the survivors were brought to the nice new building, which had become uh, more of a social center at this point. There were many people there, and the place became rather dirty and soiled because the people had just come from a shipwreck. Uh, the next meeting, at the next meeting, the members decided that the life-saving activities had become a hindrance to the activities of the social club. So they decided to discontinue life-saving activities. Members who disagreed were told to leave and build their own life-saving -sa station. Uh, they did this, and it wasn't too many years before history repeated itself, and there was another social club. Then there was another. Uh, it wasn't too many years before the, the whole seacoast was dotted with social clubs. Uh, this story is a parable. We as a church must never, never lose sight of our mission as a life-saving station filled with disciples of Jesus Christ. Many denominations, and I include my own denomination in the United Methodist Church, have become nothing more than social clubs. They would they could just as well serve drinks and lunch. As we begin reading in today's scripture, we have Jesus on his final trip to Jerusalem. The disciples and Jesus had been traveling, and Jesus had been teaching the disciples. But it's a funny thing about those disciples. It seemed that no matter how much Jesus taught them, they still weren't getting it. So what we have here is James and John coming to Jesus to ask a special favor. They want to be seated uh, on his right and left for eternity. After all, uh, Jesus had been granting people's requests right and left, you know. So why not do this for his favorite disciples? That way they can have a special place for eternity. What they don't understand, <clears throat> what, they, what they don't understand is where they are right now. But, but we'll get back to that in just a moment. The people of those days loved to have fame. The Romans would show this in their authority over the Jewish people. They made sure that the Jews knew who was ruling over them. And it started high up in the Roman authority and went right down uh, to the lowest soldier. Even the lowest soldier had authority over the Jewish people. And, and this was not limited to the Romans either. The Jewish rabbis loved to flaunt their power as did the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Everyone wanted power over other people. Today we have politicians who want to have power over us and they will do just about anything to achieve it as can be seen in this uh, in our election now. If you ask people who their heroes were today you wouldn't find many politicians on the list. Most of our heroes are sports or music figures but we should really take a close look at these because of all the drug scandals and whatnot that have been happening, along with all the greed that is in the industry. Of course, you know, we always rationalize things by saying, well, you know, these heroes are just plain folks like everyone else. So, so, so then we look to Hollywood for our heroes. We, we have found that there's uh, very, little, uh, very little moral fiber there either. Uh, so a lot of times we end up with heroes from the cartoon or fantasy world where their behavior can be made up to be wholesome. Uh, it's no wonder that we have such a tough time in this world when we have no actual heroes. So I would like to make a suggestion here. Why don't you look to the only hero that you will ever need? He's standing right in front of you at all times. He, he will make your life as exciting as it can get. He will keep you busy in a lifestyle that's very, very satisfying. Let Jesus Christ be your hero. Many people feel that us Christians are really boring people, but that's far, far from true. Jesus can and will lead you in a very exciting life if you just ask. Just ask. 
This is probably what the disciples were thinking. Jesus will do anything I ask as long as I ask it uh, in a way that's pleasing to him. So they asked and there was a problem. Uh, this was not pleasing to Jesus because it displayed uh, greed and, and selfish desire. Uh, this was uh, the ancient desire to be first at anything. This was the desire that they be the rock and roll stars of their age. This is one of the hardest desires there are to curb. Sometimes I don't even like standing in front of people and, and doing a good job. They will tell me that I do a good job and, and there's nothing wrong with that. And I appreciate it. However, I have to be on continual guard so I don't take it to mean that I'm good at anything. I have to, to remind myself that I'm not that good. I'm not good. All I have to do is look back into my life and see this. I've done hundreds and thousands of things wrong. I have to remind myself that it is Jesus who works through me that is doing all the good. All that I can ever do is just be the messenger. The only good that I can do is because of what Jesus Christ has done in my life. I think that we all struggle with battles like this. Some of us are very good at what we do. Uh, some of us strive to be the best we can, but is this really necessary? Does it really matter that we get our picture in the paper because uh, in regards to a, doing a job well? What should matter is that the job gets done well and that we do not get glory for it. Uh, it's a very hard thing to, to do in our world because every, everywhere we look we seem to have a contest to be number one but it can be done i think that farming is probably one of the most humbling occupations that there can be uh, every spring they go out and plant and fertilize so that they, they can get the best crop possible uh, then they pretty much uh, you know, go into a waiting period. I, I know that there's spraying and haying and all kinds of things that are going on, uh, but you really can only wait until the crops ripen. Farmers are at the mercy of the weather all during this time. There is nothing anyone can do about this, so the farmers really cannot take much credit for the crop. And, and this is okay. This is being humble. Right now, right now, uh, in this area, farmers are working extra hard to get the crops in due to the fall season, and we pray for their safety. I know that if you ask just about any farmer, he, he will tell you that his crops are due to the mercy of God and the weather. Uh, and I think that even then many farmers don't know what they have. Uh, we'll get back to this in just a, in a moment, just as we'll get back to where those disciples were. Okay, now Jesus knows what you and these disciples are thinking. So he asked uh, if they or you can drink from his cup or be baptized with his baptism. He is referring to the torture and death that he will have to endure. He knows that all of them uh, will go through their agonies because they are following him. Then he tells them that it is not for him. It's not for him to make that decision, but it will be made by the Father. Now, all seems good so far, you know, so far so good. Uh, of course, this conversation takes place when all the disciples have, have, are, are together. The others hear what is taking place, okay, and they understand, understandably get upset. We must realize that there can only be one at the immediate right and one at the immediate left. There is not room for three or four or six sitting on his right or left. So uh, the others have been left out. Just totally left out. They are upset with John and James because they didn't think of it first. <laughs> they, all, they all wanted to be on the immediate right and left of Jesus in eternity. This would probably be a good place for, for all of us. I, I would just about guess that Jesus has to do something here or, or these human disciples will probably riot on him uh, if it was modern day. So Jesus stops and gathers them. He tells them that they know that the Romans lord over them. He tells them that most people lord over them. They are really on the short end of the feeding chain as far as power goes in, the, in this world. Everyone lords over them. But this is not important. Greatness is not important to Jesus. Service is important. Service is important today. Also, uh, this is what, uh, what it means to, follow, uh, to be following Jesus. Many churches do a good job in this area. They, they do a good job uh, being in service to others. 
I know when I drive up to a place where there's a benefit for someone or a fundraiser for, for someone, I will find some good people leading the way. It's great to be part of a, of a <coughs> Jesus-oriented community. Uh, there are some churches that do this very well. But we have to be careful with this, just the way I have to be careful of compliments. Uh, it's always good to get the positive reinforcement. It's good to hear that we might be doing uh, some things right. But Jesus is telling us here that we are not to stop. We are to, so when we celebrate uh, uh, something like, a, say, a harvest festival, it's okay to invite someone who doesn't have a church. All churches, uh, I think, all churches should have a monthly potluck or something, and it is okay to invite new people to come. It's okay to invite people who have been alienated from their own church uh, due to some uh, big policy changes. It's okay to invite the person who has absolutely no money. It's good to invite these people so that they get the chance to know Jesus Christ, the real Jesus Christ of the Bible, and not the one that we have made up. Even in our personal lives, it's okay to know that we've done a good job. You, you may need this once in a while uh, just to keep things going, but you cannot quit there either. You need to be in constant vigil against the enemy. You need to be in constant check that you don't use language or, or do things that Jesus doesn't approve. You need to be in constant alert uh, for doing things for your own fame and glory. All in all, we need to be careful. We need to be careful that we do not become a chain of social clubs that we found in our opening story. This can and does happen often. Denominations become social clubs. As soon as you deny the Bible and the teachings of Jesus Christ, then you might as well hang up a sign and start serving drinks and meals at your new social club because it will have nothing, nothing to do with what you're supposed to be doing. I would like to go back to where the disciples are at the time of this reading. What the disciples don't know is that they are at the right and left of Jesus Christ as they speak. They are in an honored place and they will be there for eternity. Jesus, God, does not play, they do, he does not play favorites. Uh, we always like to think of Jesus in our earthly terms uh, so that we can understand him better, but Jesus is not earthly. His ways are not our ways. He is totally beyond the thinking of this world. We cannot understand his power or his ability to be in all places at the same time through the Holy Spirit. We cannot understand that we will all be on the right and on the left of Jesus for eternity. We all have this special place. People who don't know Jesus have little chance of understanding this. And many times, many of us don't, don't have, a, have a hard time too. It's hard for us because all we know is this world that we live in. We need to have faith. We need to have faith in Jesus that he has a better place for us. Jesus does, does this because of his tremendous love for us. I mentioned the farmers sometimes do not know uh, uh, what they have, and, and this extends to all of us. You have Jesus right now. He is here with you. He, this whole passage uh, has this for a bottom line. Oh, it, it tells us about greed and, and envy. It, it tells us that Jesus and the disciples and us will suffer. Uh, it tells us that our main job is to serve, but underneath all of this, it is telling us that Jesus Christ is beside you right now, and he will be there for eternity. So the next time something happens, remember this. When the machinery breaks down, Jesus is near. When the weather is bad, Jesus is close by. When you have trouble in your marriage, Jesus is just a prayer away. When you are suffering, he's right there with you. Jesus loves you so much that he will never, never go away. So remember this as you go about your life this week. Jesus is there, and he will get you through these tough times. <clears throat> you have to get in the habit of asking, of praying. Uh, when things go wrong, take a break. Take 10 seconds to, or take 10 minutes and talk to Jesus. Give the problem to him who has all who has the answers for all the problems on all the things. You will not be giving up your independence by doing this. You'll be gaining your independence. When you are in communication with Jesus, then you will be communicate he will be communicating right back to you. He loves 
He loves to talk to you, uh, so go to him and ask. We talked a few weeks back about how James, in, in James, how God doesn't play favorites, and I just mentioned this. He doesn't have to do this. He is everywhere, and we are all, all his favorites. If you know Jesus, then you have no worries about where you will be in heaven. He has taken all of our worries out of our lives. Our job is to be serving him while we are here. Uh, his blessings will pour forth over you if you quit thinking about yourselves and start living for Jesus. This is the love. This is the love, the tremendous love which he has for us. He has this for you. You specific, specifically. Bask in it and love him back through obedience. And thank you, Jesus, for first loving us. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, we, we praise you and thank you, Lord, for all that you do and for the, for the very fact that you are near us. You are close to us all the time, Lord. All we have to do is ask. We ask that you help us to get in the habit of asking. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This concludes our service for the, today, for this week, and I thank you for joining us. And now for the benediction. May the Lord bless you, and may the Lord keep you, and may his face shine upon you. As you go out into this wonderful, wonderful world, he made just for you, knowing that he's right beside you. Go in God's peace. Thank you. And amen.